Hello there guys, welcome back to another episode of ENF TV. Uh, today we're joined by Antoine uh, Edgecombe, uh, who is the commercial director over at Noetic uh, Marketing Technologies. Um, Antoine, thank you so much for joining us today. Tom, it's a pleasure to join you. It's, uh, obviously, we've been in contact for a little while now, uh, and I'd like to say that we've uh, become pretty good friends. Um, and it's actually brilliant to finally get you on the show, to be honest, because um, I love getting tech businesses on the show, finding out what they do, and of course, how they're supporting the hospitality industry that we find ourselves in now. So yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Now, how we generally like to start the show is understanding a bit about the guests, so a bit about you, your background. Um, so yeah, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, well, pleasure to be here. Thank you. I, I always thoroughly enjoy watching your watching your videos and listening to what you're doing. I think you're doing a great job. So uh, keep doing it. I did, um, so I a bit about me. Just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I did not pay him to say that just for the record. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> um, so a bit about me. I suppose I've had a, a, a varied and I suppose a hopefully still varied career leading me to where I am today. I, I, I sort of, I suppose I started... The first jobs were, were really in and around kind of things like retail and, and then uh, food and clothing retail. Loved all those things, lovely grounding. Then moved into hospitality uh, where I worked um, in various kind of roles in and around a sort of events and then working in, in pubs and, uh, and then for, for many years working in a restaurant and, and just absolutely loving it you know working in that environment where you've got a team where it's fast uh, the pace is fast it's it can be stressful um and i think that that for me gave me a massive grounding in understanding how how these businesses work why they work uh, and you know just having to do it day in day out so that that was great um i then spent a fair bit of time in and around financial institutions so sort of uh, small finance houses to larger banks um thoroughly enjoyed that again very different um, we then, my wife and I had a four year break. We call it a break. We were working. We went to go and live in Australia and did some kind of uh, very different uh, and interesting, crazy things there. So we worked on a, a cattle station, um, which was just fantastic. We had you know, lots of cattle, lots of crocodiles. It was in Northern Australia. So just such an eye opener. Um, and then spent a bit more time in and around the whole agriculture and food business that we were working in, which was just fantastic. Um, had our had our two children out there as well, which was which was great, and and then it was time to return to the UK. Um, kind of fell back into finance, I suppose, as as the easiest sort of path uh, to getting back to a, a real job and uh, having to to pay for life again. Sort of la landing back in the UK with your your wife and two children and uh, being back at home in your dad's house. It certainly focuses the mind quite a lot. So uh, yeah, that was good. And then I had a few years there and just thought. Do you know what? I want something different again. And uh, a friend of mine suggested I talk to a, a couple of people that had a business, uh, Noetic, in, um, in technology and in hospitality. And I kind of thought, do you know what? That might just combine the two things that, that I, I've always loved throughout my career. You know, I, I moved sort of through finance to, to, to working with technology as close as I could do and, and sort of took me back to hospitality and, and just thought, do you know what? Let's try and combine those two. And, and it's just been an absolute pleasure. Working in and around people in hospitality is... It kind of, it's, it's incredible. It makes you realize how hard they work day in, day out. Um, always with a smile on their face, always getting up and doing the same things really well. And I thought, you know what? If this technology can just make that job a little bit easier, then that, that's the place I want to be. Definitely. I, mean, I, um, I remember meeting you for the first time at Hospace. <laughs> you were sitting at the same table as, as me. And... Um, it was it was incredible listening to the stories that you had when you were out there, and it was just such an incredible, almost icebreaker. Um, and yeah, so it's uh, it's as I say, it's great to hear about obviously your background, and of course now you're in the same industry as uh, as myself, effectively different market, of course, but same industry. And um, yeah, it's it's I don't know, it's you're certainly one of the most interesting people I've met in a very long time. <laughs> Let's put it like that. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, well, thanks. I appreciate that. It certainly feels like you're, you're scraping the barrel today with me, but you know what? I'll take it and we'll... You uh, <laughs> should see what the video turns out like. <laughs> um, okay, well, obviously, in terms of your perspective, that's something that I really wanted to sort of hone in on uh, today. Mm. So I suppose 
from your perspective, in terms of the disruption that's happened, you know, how are businesses, from your perspective, again, succeeding, I suppose, in this situation or, or not just surviving, but where are the successes? I mean, have you seen anything like that during the pandemic with your clients? Um, it, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, it's been incredibly hard. Uh, and this, you know, the hospitality and travel sector has been, um, you know, the most affected. And, and it's, it's heartbreaking, really, seeing people's businesses having to close, to reopen, to close. It's just so hard on them. Um, but, you know, there are signs of positivity out there. And I think with any, with any crisis, there are people that will find opportunity. Um, and if they're able to sort of to look past the current situation, um, and plan for what will come back and, and what will be, you know, still a viable and thriving industry, then they are doing that. So, you know, for us based in the UK, the initial lockdown was, was hard, you know, people, um, it just kind of hit them uh, and it was a real shock. And I think we, we then had a, you know, back, back to business as usual over the summer. And then the second lockdown has now hit us. And I think it's been one of those things where, decision-making processes that might have taken quite a long time, especially with technology um, for hotels, which is where, where we sit, um, has significantly been brought forward. So they've gone, do you know what? We, we've always wanted to try and change, and actually maybe this is the best time to try and do that change. So we're kind of working through that um, with them. And of course it's hard because you know, budgets, budgets are smaller, et cetera, et cetera, but th there's always a way. Um, and, and I suppose... Yeah, I suppose a, a nice success for the industry in the UK, especially over the summer, was the staycation market and seeing uh, hotels that were able to quickly react to that and, and sort of to get the message out there to talk to prospective guests and were able to, to do quite well. So, you know, there are always little signs um, and hopefully for us, tech plays a part in that. Definitely. I mean, it's a conversation that I've had on numerous occasions now in terms of, uh, well, with Shona Whitehead in terms of tech debt. So actually hoteliers and, and businesses focusing on tech to try and get them through the next however long it's going to be um, mm. without obviously becoming almost behind the curve to their competition. Um, and I suppose it actually brings me on to my next question, which is obviously the pandemic has, of course, hit us all in very different ways. The disruption has created a lot of negative results and a lot of difficult times. In terms of the tech side of things, so, you know, such as you guys and other tech companies, I suppose, what does this mean for you guys going forward? What does it mean for you guys at the moment? How have you had to adapt things? And also, have you seen a desire from the businesses and from hoteliers to actually invest in tech at the moment? What, what's the situation from that front? Um, you know, uh, it's, it's been hard for them. And I think what they don't want to do is necessarily um, invest in something completely new. So, so uh, hoteliers, rightly so, sometimes have been, you know, cautious to not take away from what they do because they all, it's a people business, you know, people go and stay in hotels because, because they, you know, they love it and they want to feel like they are somewhere special, um, and so you can't take away from that. The, 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 bit, the message that we always say is, you know, tech just needs to enhance that. It needs to almost sit behind the scenes, just provide you with that little bit extra, a little bit extra information, a little bit of extra, uh, a couple extra bookings, all that kind of stuff, just to feed into what you already do, which is just be a people business. Um, so I think, you know, by their very nature, tech businesses are, are are hopefully nimble and you know need to be changing and growing and, and being a part of that. And so I think just that blend of for us saying technology sits behind what you do, it doesn't take away what you do. And I think that message is beginning to come through and and people are beginning to see past it. I think you know uncertainty is never good and it is it, it can be a bit scary with not knowing when this is going to end, when it's when we're going to get a vaccine, all that you know, like kind of stuff, although we've had some good news this week about about vaccines. Um, it does just take time for people to get their heads around it all. I think um, it's one of these things where, again, tech companies like everyone else has ha have had to adapt. They've had to uh, sort of go with the sort of current situation. And as we sort of spoke about just before we started today, with disruption and like the pandemic, with this disruption, there needs to be some positive change somewhere. There needs to be some 
positive to the negative that's going on. And I think what businesses have found, and this is only from conversations that I've had with various different sort of leaders within the industry, is they've had to adapt in the way they do things. They've had to look at the systems they use. They've had to use, uh, sorry, look at and address the tech that they've got currently. And is it fit for purpose? Um, and as I said at the start of the question, they have to avoid the being behind the curve element because as soon as business is difficult enough to get at the moment without being in already competition with other people, with people that are chopping prices left, right and centre. And mm-hmm. of course, that needs to be countered with a sophisticated tech and systems proposition, I suppose, or, or opportunity to be able to tap into those clients that you might not have or the long-term uh, business, obviously, that we're going to be talking about shortly, but tapping into that area and bringing the people in that m- they might not have got before. Um, mm. It's very much a case of throwing the rule book out the window and, and almost rewriting it for your business because of the, the current situation and going forward. Um, but no, I, I completely agree with what you said. Um, mm. yeah. In terms of you guys at the moment, so, of course, at the end of each show, we'd love to hear about what's happening from our guest point of view, what's happening with their business, how they're supporting the industry at the moment. So what, what's, what's going on with you guys at the moment? Um, lots really. I mean, I think the, the nice thing for us is that being a tech business was, of course, we serve hospitality and so we like to be in and around it. Um, the, the, you know, the various lockdowns and, and changes in work patterns that we've now become so used to, you know, kind of working from home is is no longer a new thing. It's an enforced thing. But so for us, we're lucky because we're technology. So as long as you've got a, you know, a laptop and an internet connection, which I think most people do in the UK, you can just easily do that. So for us, it hasn't been too difficult to sort of shift away from that. The tricky bit has been, I suppose, maintaining that team, that ethos, that spirit. Um, but, you know, I think uh, you know, the, the people that work in the business with me are are mostly far younger than me and, and they're kind of good at these things. You know, it's probably just me that struggles the most. I'm used to going seeing people and talking to people and you know, kind of that, that fun bit of the hospitality business, which is going out to see people and, and engaging. Um, but but that, yeah, that, that's kind of it really. And I think what we've always tried to do is have an element of flexibility in our work patterns. Um, and whilst being a tech business, we like to plan and have a roadmap for what's coming up, you know, that, that kind of has to change. And, and the nice thing was seeing that change, especially for us in the first lockdown where we kind of said we were you know, led by our customers really saying that we need this or we're not sure about this. So we had to kind of throw it all away and start, start again with lots of, lots of the plans. But, you know, it's, it's been nice to see it. Um, and I guess we feel lucky that we can work from home relatively successfully. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, something that obviously we spoke about was the, I think it was the app that you guys have got. Currently. Mm-hmm. I know there's been a few changes and a few updates to that uh, to help actually clients even more. So I think it'd be great if you could tell us a bit about that. And, and again, what I'll do is I'll link, uh, I'll put a link to it in the description below so people can click on it and find out a bit more about it for themselves as well. Mm, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yes, we, yes, we have spoken about that before. The app is, I suppose the app kind of taps into everything that we do and everything that we try and do is to provide direct relationships for hotels. So that kind of, you know, that holy grail of having a direct relationship. Um, and I suppose we just saw that it's, the OTAs, whilst they do a fantastic job and they're very good at it, they own essentially that guest relationship. And it just kind of felt a bit unfair that uh, the hoteliers do, you know, do the really hard work and the good bit, which is actually creating a, uh, a nice feeling and a nice stay and a nice environment, um, yet aren't necessarily getting the credit for that, that direct guest relationship. So everything we've done and built technology-wise um, in and around that has been all about um, understanding where the guests come from, uh, why they stay, how long they stay, where the booking journey has been to even just post stay, you know, where they're going, what they're looking at, when they're going to try and come back. Um, so for us, a, a really interesting part of this pandemic was that actually people were turning towards technology and saying that, you know, a guest app is something we actually, we probably need. Now, we hadn't necessarily built the guest app for that reason. We built it because we saw it as a, a, a tool to directly communicate and have a relationship with the guest. You know, if, if, you're, if you're on their phone and you're doing clever things like 
allowing them to book, allowing them to change their bookings, allowing them to open the doors, allowing them to communicate with the guests, giving them access to the Wi-Fi, you know, all the kind of stuff that just makes it simple. Um, it gives us that direct relationship. Um, and then the whole point of the pandemic was that kind of low touch as well. People wanted to communicate with their guests, but not necessarily have them all come to reception to get a key. So the app hopefully just takes away from that. And for us, slots into understanding everything about the guest journey. You know, it just gives us far more information about what they're doing uh, in stay, how long they are spending in the restaurant, in the uh, coffee shop, in the spa, in the golf course, all that kind of stuff. Just for us, it's all about feeding further data into, into our machine to understand the guests and work out how you, well, firstly work out if they are going to be a guest or they are a guest that has a higher lifetime value than another guest, and then how you work out how to get more of them and get them to come back. So the app just is, is another piece in that pie for us, but you know, a really successful one. If it works and you get good uptake and good usage, it's, it's incredibly, incredibly helpful. And this was one of the things that I, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it because almost the guest journey has become more important than ever. Absolutely, without doubt. And understanding your guest, understanding your product and enabling the sort of business or hotel or service department, whatever it is, if mm -hmm. they have any sort of leg up in that area, it's going to be nothing but a positive. Um, so that's, that's why I say what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to link the uh, sort of information, I suppose, below. So if people do want to check that out, they can obviously read up on it and see if they want to take it up. Um, obviously, Antoine, I just want to say a massive thank you for for joining us today. I know you are extremely busy. So for taking your time out of your diary and joining us today, it's been incredibly interesting to get your insight for, as I said, from your sort of perspective and the tech side of things. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Tom, thank you for having me. Yeah. And guys, don't forget to see who's on next week's episode now.